Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, IHAR Radio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Millennial Mom segment, we're featuring my dear friend, Amy Kennedy, Education Director at the Kennedy Forum, super mama to five amazing kiddos, and dedicated wife to Patrick Kennedy. Today, she is joined by Amber Toth, CEO of Dragon Mobile and a loving mom, with a focus on being a present and engaged parent while also pursuing her career goals. Lee Hunt is Dragon Cell Phone co-founder. He's a renowned entrepreneur, startup guru, and visionary leader in the world of tech and innovation. He has become an influential figure in the startup ecosystem, and his dedication to empowering entrepreneurs and shaping the future of business has cemented his reputation as a startup, true startup guru. Today, we're chatting Dragon Mobile, mental health disorders in children, how it's all connected, and what we need to be doing as parents. Now, in a recent report, while social media use by teens is near ubiquitous, the U.S. Surgeon General is warning that the mental health impacts are still not fully known and has called on tech companies to take immediate action to mitigate unintended negative effects. Dr. Vivek Murphy noted that while children under 13 are technically banned from signing up for services like TikTok, Snapchat, and more, children have been able to easily join and bypass those limitations. Up to 95% of kids between the ages of 13 and 17 report using a social media platform with more than a third saying they use social media almost constantly. And that's according to a new report from the Surgeon General. Very scary stuff. Welcoming now to the show are my experts at hand. Welcome, my friends. Hello, hello. hello. Hey, Sam. Amy, so nice to have you back on. Let's start with you. So this report hinted at a call for more government oversight of social media companies. The U.S., it said, has a history of regulating things that impact children, ranging from toys to medications, and giving the mounting evidence for the risk of harm to some children and adolescents from social media use, a safety-first approach should be applied in the context of social media products, it read. What do you say to this? I think the evidence is clear. I'm as concerned as any parent about the impact of social media on our youth and really just the um, impact of technology and the constant use and connectedness. As one uh, young person, a sophomore in today's New York Times article said, he is concerned about how it's manipulating the reward centers in his own brain. So I think young people know it's a problem. Parents know it's a problem and we need to take action. Without a doubt. You said it. Now, Amber, this this is exactly what you've been preaching. You're eager to regulate what our children are absorbing. In fact, so eager that you're now advocating for cell phone regulation and restrictions. What is the motivation behind Dragon Cell? Um, basically, personal experience and what I've seen from the kids around. I, you know, we see like kids struggling now with their mental health, their, um, how they feel about themselves in the world, what they, um, where they fit in. And a lot of that is influenced by social media. And um, this is something that I don't think that kids should be worrying about at this impact at this age. So being able to kind of scale back from all of that stuff and, and introduce them back into the world of being a child and learning that way is is like my biggest drive. Of course, because if you look at it, right, our kids are getting lost from overconnectivity to di digital exposure. And I know that I went on your website and any parents, it's really evident, Dragon offers parents and children the ability to be connected and safe without the distractions. And I love how affordable this is. I mean, you could find any plan to fit your needs. I saw plans starting at $9 and they all had unlimited calls. And that's really all you need. You just need to be able to communicate. You don't need to be plugged into the point where, to Amy's point, you know, the, the receptors in children's brains are now being manipulated and or over and under stimulated in terms of, you know, what their expectations are for, for the bigger picture, which is called life. Now, Lee, beyond your role as a mentor, you have contributed significantly to the startup ecosystem through your thought leadership and public speaking engagements, adding invaluable insight and really inspiring people worldwide. Your, your passion for fostering entrepreneurship extends beyond traditional boundaries. Now, as a tech guy, what steps has Dragon Cell Phone taken to secure 
data sovereignty and consumers' privacy. I mean, we are dealing with children. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, from, from my past, the industry that I've been in, I've been in telecommunications for 25 years. And so we've seen the whole shift come from bag phones to flip phones to smartphones. And now we're kind of going back into this, this whole disconnection of, of technology. And so, you know, we look at that from a, a, a technology standpoint to say, how do we protect privacy? How do we provide, protect the data? But it's not even only for the kids, but I mean, in general, right? So we've always been uh, looked at data points um, and how to protect that data from a, from day one, right? So a lot of the things that we we look at, like we look at usage on devices over time, but we don't know who that end up individual is. We don't know, you know, if it's a uh, male, female, black, white. We don't really see that. What we see is we see usage patterns. With dragons, a little different. So now we take out all of the data points, right? So we we don't need to. Uh, to, to understand data usage on these phones, because it's very simple. There is no data usage, right? There's app usage, there's phone calls, there's text messaging. Uh, none of that stuff is is accessible anywhere, right? So, I mean, we've kind of always looked at data points and, and privacy as number one. And that's what we're doing de definitely at Dragon. So important. And, and I'm, I'm glad that you guys are thinking of this stuff. Now, Amy, a particular concern is the effect uh, of social media on brain development. You touched on this earlier. And adolescents between the ages of 10 and 19 are, in fact, in a period where risk-taking behaviors reach their highest levels and when depression and other mental health issues often emerge. That age is also where children's sense of self-worth begins to manifest. Now, social media can severely affect that development. We know this. How can improper, specifically cell phone use, impact our children's social and emotional development, Amy? You know, I think there's a misconception that it is just a specific app that's not good. You know, if I just keep my kids off TikTok or, oh, well, they don't have a Snapchat account or they don't have a Discord account. So there, we think we're protecting them. But what we really are not realizing is it's not just which app they're using. It's the amount of time that they're spending. It's the algorithms on the apps that they are using that are part of the problem because the time that they're spent on social media generally or on a device is time that they're not spent connecting in person or, or pursuing the other things that they enjoy in life. And so, you know, by requiring social media companies to conduct age verifications, um, we could really make a difference here, but we also need to require them to stop using those algorithms for teens under 18 so that they're not being fed the content that may be harmful to them. That's why Kennedy Forum is supported the bipartisan legislation called the Protecting Kids on Social Media Act. And it really would create a pilot government age um, verification project that platforms can use and provide the FTC and state attorney general's authority to enforce the provisions of the bill. Amazing. And, and this is exactly why you do the work you do. You are a trailblazer in your field and you have the evidence firsthand. So, you know, you are, this is a warning. I mean, you're warning parents. You're telling them, hey, listen, you have to wake up. You have to take control into your own hands and take those devices out of theirs. Now, of course, we know frequent social media use is associated with distinct changes in the developing brain, in the amygdala portion of the brain, which is important for emotional learning and behavior, and in the prefrontal cortex, which is also important for impulse control, emotional regulation, and moderating social behavior. So this definitely needs to be monitored. Um, Amber, let's let's shift to you now. Let's circle back to simplifying our lives as moms and not needing to play Sherlock Holmes. So with Dragon Cell Phone, do parents need to monitor and manage their children's data and content usage? I mean, this is very time consuming. Yeah, no, that is something that we handle at the very beginning. So when somebody signs up with us, we have um, their specific app or app, their specific plan that they chose loaded with those um, um, features locked down, basically. So once it gets into their hands, they don't need to do anything else. They get they hand it to their child. Their child is able to use those features and they're all very limited to your text call or your your calls, your text messages, and um, basic functions on the phone. That's it. 
there isn't any access to anything else. So it's not something that they have to go in and lock down. It's not something they have to go in and set time limits. It's not something they have to go in and, and um, say, okay, it's bedtime. There's nothing really for them to um, have to worry about. It's something we take care of in the very beginning. I love it because here, here we are buying iPhones and then taking the iPhone and disabling 90% of the apps for our kids, but still have to pay, you know, the premium for having an iPhone, right? So right. this is amazing. It brings you back to basics. And remember, this is a big thing I read on your website. At Dragon, there's no pornography, predators, bullies, no social media or harmful games. And I love that you can graduate kids into more functionality based on needs and maturity and then access what you call your safe apps for creativity. I mean, it truly, alas, feels like a safe environment to prepare kids for the future. So I love what you've done, uh, Amber. Lee, what makes Dragon different from the other kids safe services out there from your dad's perspective? Well, I mean, it's it's an all in one solution, right? So, I mean, there's other companies out there that'll sell a device, they have service, but bringing everything into one roof. And, and that's really where it makes a big difference, right? From a, from a dad or mom perspective is like, if I can buy this phone and it's already done, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to go in and set parental controls and all this stuff. I don't have to pick a plan. I don't have to get a number from the management perspective. It's just easy, right? It's a one, one and done here, buy it, give it to your kid and don't think about it again. I love it. And YouTube, look, YouTube is wide, widely viewed by teens as a positive force, but then teens report Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. They report that those apps increase their feelings of anxiety. And statistically, Amy taught me this, girls are disproportionately affected by the negative effects and aspects of social media. So it, it really, we have to start to wake up here. Now, Amy, eighth graders who spend 10 or more hours a week on social media are 56% more likely to report being unhappy than those who spend less time. Now, in a world where communication is key, does it make sense to go back to the flip phone era? You know, it's funny. My oldest child just sent me those statistics. And I said that, you know, she's using the phone less than the average teen. And I said, yeah, but do you want to be like the average teen? The average teen is depressed and anxious and uh, having a whole lot of mental health challenges. So we don't want our kids to be following the average amount of time. We really need to look for ways to reduce that. And that may mean a different type of device altogether. I will agree with you, you know, being Sherlock Holmes is really tough as a parent. I've done that. I am, you know, always um, the one that's waiting up to take that phone at bedtime and making sure that uh, the other apps are limited with time limits and different things. And we want to instead not have to say to our kids, can you put the phone down? We're at the dinner table. Can you put the phone down? We're doing this or that. But it, that is the reality of today. Uh, some young people are taking this on as their way to show that they are not being controlled by social media and they are putting the phones down themselves. Others still haven't really uh, come around to the idea and resent a little bit of the control. For sure, but flip phones, to your point and to your, to your uh, child's point, are trending now thanks to TikTok as influencers and celebrities are promoting flip phones because it's easy to disconnect and live in the moment. And that's what it's all about right now. That's what we want to teach our kids. Thank you so much for coming on. What an insightful, amazing segment. I mean, I learned a ton and I know that parents listening out there, you solved a lot of problems for a lot of them out there. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. absolutely. Thank you. Amy, we are going to send you and your family a whole bunch of dragon cell phones and you can get your kids <laughs> on a safe platform. It would, that be, would be great. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, guys, definitely do check out dragoncellphone.com. It's one of those incredible platforms, dragoncellphone.com, on the gram at Safe Dragon Phone. And of course, remember, parents face significant challenges, significant challenges in managing children and adolescents' use of social media applications, and youth are using social media at increasingly earlier ages. While nearly all parents believe that they have a responsibility to protect their children from inappropriate content online, the entire 
severe burden of mitigating the risk of harm of social media cannot be placed on the shoulders of children and parents. It should not. And so making Dragon cell phone a top choice is definitely my mom approved choice. Also head to the KennedyForum.org. They are an incredible organization at the forefront of mental health disorders, especially in children. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. 